Actually, this is Dr. Silaman here. I'm going to demonstrate to you about stimulating epidural catheters and how you are able to place the catheter tip in the site-specific region so that we are able to get a very limited area of anesthesia according to wishes, right? This particular patient is a patient with electrical burns. You can see that he is having, uh, this is the place where they are going to do a skin graft. So they are going to take a graft from here and they are going to place it here. This is L1, L2, L3, L4 territory and this is L5, S1 is also added. So if you are going in for a segmental epidural for this patient, we are going to block from, say, from L1 to S1. If this is the area we are going to block, right? From L1 to S1. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 segments. So aim is to block these 6 segments only. So that the patient is comfortable during anesthesia and if requires possible analgesia also. So this segmental is based on certain basic principles, right? So first point is we have to decide about the area to be blocked. Now we have decided what areas you are going to block. It is from L1 to S1. Next, we have where we are going to place the catheter tip. That is what we are going to decide. The catheter tip is going to be placed exactly in the center of this areas or the vertebral spines to be blocked. This is based on the principle that the drug which is given epidurally spreads equally on either sides of the catheter tip. So here, 1, 2, 3 segments above, 4, 5, 6 segments below, the catheter tip is going to be placed between L3 and L4. Okay. So, as far as an epidural is concerned, sometimes the L4, L5 space may be sometimes difficult to get. So, because you are going to plan at L3, L4, you can either enter at L1, L2, caudally direct the catheter to go to L3 or enter at L4, L5 and direct the catheter, cephaloid, to come to L3, L4. So, basically let us consider, based on our uh, uh, clinical calculations, that for to cross one cervical, to cross one vertebral spine, 2 centimeters of the catheter has to be within the space. So, if you are going to enter at L4, L5, we need about 2 centimeters to cross L4 and 1 centimeter roughly to come to L3, L4. So, 3 to 3.5 centimeters of catheter will have to be inside the space for us to come to L3, L4. Same if you are entering from L1, L2, you need about 5 to 5.5 centimeters. 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 plus 0.5, 5.5 centimeters. You need to thread it inside so that basically you should not thread a catheter more than 5 centimeters. Kinking, all those things will occur. So, ideally it is better that we keep it within 5 centimeters. Now, first let us try at the L4-5 level. Sir, what is the sir? Local anesthesia. Local anesthesia infiltration. Sir, relax. Sir, relax. Vali on ilia, sir. Pardon, mother. Vali on ilia, sir. Less of the good. See, basically, you have different uh, needles for this, but because uh, the people from Payung could not supply us the original, we were using the needles which you use for uh, nerve locators to go inside. This is the needle. We are using a 5 centimeter needle, which could be more than sufficient. So, I am going to use a 5 centimeter needle to fry in the epidural space. Sir, Vali Irinda Sulunga. Ata dinga. As usual, this all this is routine epidural laws of resistance. You want the flavor, I think. Ask them to uh, place the camera properly, Silamu. Yeah, are you able to see it now? Yeah. I think you should come a little below. Height correcting na. Okay. Yes, we are inside the space now. Okay. Now, the only difficulty when using this is, you know, because we do not have wings, now there is a sudden doubt on what side my catheter tip is going to be. Mm, where is the stillet?
I'll just remove the stillet. No oh, stillet. Okay, fine. It's okay, no problem. But can I can you get me that needle? Show me that. Open up and show me that needle. Yeah. Good. Okay, fine. Now, this is the stimulating catheter, which you are going to put it inside. You can just see how it is. See, the tip of the catheter, can you just focus on the tip? Very closely, can you focus on the tip of this catheter, please? Can you see the tip of the catheter having a metal lead? Yes. In golden color, right? Okay. That tip alone has a metal lead and a wire runs throughout the, within the plastic of the catheter. So what happens is, if you are meeting any resistance while pushing the catheter, if the catheter kinks too much, the metal needle also starts kinking and further threading of the catheter becomes very difficult. So it will be very, very careful and very, very slow while threading the, the stimulating catheters. Okay. Right. Just like you push in your CVP catheters, Slowly push it inside. Length of the catheter 60 centimeters, but because we are using the uh, routine epidural length is around 60 centimeters, but it's because using the locator, we are having some, it's only 30 centimeters. See, I'm having problems at 10 centimeters. The needle is only 5 centimeters. I'm almost about uh, 2 to 2.5 centimeters in the space, and I'm having problems with pushing the catheter after that. This is the only problem I faced with these epidural catheters, stimulating catheters. You have to be extremely gentle. So I will try to hold on to the catheter slowly and I am trying to push it inside. It is still not going. See, it's main problem is sometimes it becomes difficult. Just a second. some small fine adjustments. Just a second. I still have a doubt regarding my epidural space itself. Flush it. No problem, it's okay. No problem, it should be okay. Feeling the flavor, going past the flavor. I think I'm inside. I think it should be okay. Yeah, we have gone past that obstruction. I think now threading should be much easier. Sir, one less side tension lamber. You're almost around twelve centimeters inside the spare, six centimeters inside. We almost shut around the cutting. Huh? See, almost uh, we are nearly 20, there are four markings, okay. roughly around 20 centimeters inside. Okay. Now, what I do is I now try to push it a little more and I see basically what happens is we have the space has been got at four centimeters. Okay. So, we are going to give 3.5 centimeters inside. 
So roughly at around 7.5 centimeters, uh, we should the, the stimulation of L3, L4 root should take place, right? Okay. That is what we are calculating, right? Yeah. This distance is 4 centimeters. Now, now I am going to remove the needle, no? So as we are going to withdraw the catheter, we are going to stimulate and come down, okay? Now I am removing the needle. Yes. Now, now we are trying to connect it to a nerve locator to stimulate it. Can can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now it's locked. And now, the other, this one, this one, this one, yeah. And uh, uh, the ECG lead to be placed here. No, not here. It should be placed here. Basically, what happens with the ground electrode, when we are doing epidural stimulating catheters, should be placed away from where you are passing the current. If it is very close, what happens is multiple local movements start coming and specifications become very difficult. So, a lumbar, the ground electrode is fixed in the upper limb. Is the cutting, sir? Okay. See, it is fixed in the upper limb. If okay. you are doing a cervical or a thoracic, you fix Come it down. in the lower extremity, right? Okay. Fine. Yes. Is the connect money Good. We start basically, epidural stimulating catheters, we start with a very high current. If the stimulation occurs below 1 milliampere, it means you are either subdural or subarachnoid. So basically, anything at more than 2 or 3 milliampere is what is sufficient. And secondly, because we cannot control the direction of the catheter, sometimes we need even up to 6 or 7, this so that we can slowly try to manipulate the catheter. So basically, what we are going to use here is a, we are using a, a top nerve locator. It has two varieties, you see. Uh, can you come closer? Yes, sir. I want to show this high low here. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. See, it has one high and one low. If you are in the low, the maximum current is delivered is up to 5 amperes. If you go to high, you can actually go up to 10, ampere, 10, ma, 10, 10 uh, milliamperes. So both varieties are here. So we are going to start with, say around, no, circuit is, is the circuit complete? Oh, the circuit is not complete, somewhere there is a problem. Hmm? No, no sir, call will give Okay, okay. Why is it earlier? Please, please, sir. Yeah. Yes. We are going up to three. Right? Yes. Where? Once again, now what we are doing is, sir, you can do a Jasi puna poir stop puna irga thiripi. First one start puna. Ah yes, thiripi start puna. Slow la. Ah, slow increase. Point two, point three, one more irga. Yes, come to three, sir, and stop with three, and then I'll manipulate the catheter. So now, if you can see here, we, the space was reached at 4. Normally at about 7.5 centimeters, should actually, according to our calculations, place the catheter between L3 and L4. We are not seeing the injection site. You want the, it's going to come to you now. I'm going to pull yeah. the catheter down. Okay. The cutting, sir, injection site cutting, huh? It's there now. It's now? Okay, fine. 
we are having a current of around 3.08 and at the injection site is around 16 centimeters slowly pulling it down the success rate in this is supposed to be around only 82 percent in placing the catheter properly any movement there Okay, sir, Fatula. Yeah. Patient has a shock like sensation on the legs. I come to nine centimeters of the skin. I come to five. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, see. Basically, you can see the patient making some contractions there. You cannot get, most of the time, you cannot get contractions like you get in a now locator needle. Could you increase one, sir? You could increase one, sir? Yeah, intermittent, yeah. Yeah. See, basically we are at 7.5. Increase for example, you will see. It is there? Can you see the, can you see the contraction of the thigh? Yeah, it, it can be seen. Yes. So, basically we are at L3, L4 roughly. The catheter tip. So, L2, 3, 4 is thigh muscle contraction. That is what you are supposed to expect. You can okay. see the contractions here. Okay. And also see, we are getting it at a current of 4 milliampers. Okay. Because basically this probably places the uh, epidural catheter tip about 1 to 1.5 centimeters away from the nerve root. Okay. Okay. But basically what happens is, you must be, when you want to go for segmental epidural anesthesia, you have to be very site specific. Then only the spread of, because you are going to use 8 to 7 to 8 ml of the local anesthetic to block this whole area. Okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Uh, the exact area where we are going to operate, the whole area is contracting. Can you see that now? Yeah, yeah, now it is. Yeah. And you can be bilateral or it can be unilateral. But here you are getting unilateral exactly in the site of surgery. Okay. That is certainly an advantage now. The main advantage of this is one is it helps you identify the epidural space. Number two, it avoids. Uh, it can help you help to identify subdural or subarachnoid placement. If you have a subdural or a subarachnoid placement, the contractions are usually bilateral, always bilateral, and it occurs at currents less than 1 milliampere. Okay. So the contractions got above 1 milliampere only are supposed to be epidural. Okay. Suppose if it is below 1 milliampere, it is subdural, subarachnoid. Same way, when you are in the epidural space, and uh, once you give the local anesthetic, the threshold current increases after the local anesthetic is given. Okay. Suppose if the catheter is placed, placed intravascular, then what happens is, even after giving the local anesthetic, the threshold current doesn't increase because okay. the local is taken away by the blood. blood right? <coughs> so we exactly now place the catheter. We wanted at 7.5. We have brought the catheter. Place the catheter at 7.5 centimeters from the skin. Okay. Okay? And so we are, same way you can pause it from here, you can reverse the catheter, look okay. for the same movements. Okay? Okay. Now, what happens is, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 to 1.5, we are going to give 9 ml of local anesthetic to anesthetize from L1 to S1. Okay. A young healthy adult, even if you are going to give 10, 15 ml, nothing is going to happen. Okay. But if you think about 80, 90 year old man, suppose you are going to give a lot of volume, more hypotension. Here with this ML, there is not going to be much of hypertension. Only few areas are going to be blocked. This is the main advantage of segment lipidural. And these catheters help us to a certain extent in finding out the exact location of our catheter. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, done. I am through with it. How long can the catheter be kept? See, these catheters can be kept for a week. Week? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we will we'll give the drug. That's not a problem. Sir? Yes, sir. Sir, what uh, should, should one do if the catheter uh, broke inside uh, while removing? Catheter while removing if it breaks inside? Yes. 
then I think you have to remove it. You can't leave it like that. <laughs> you can't leave the cow. You have to tell the patient to sterile get the done. Nothing will happen. Go home and come back. But basically, it's ideal to tell the patient. No. Okay, thank you, Dr. Silamban. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I sir. think uh, we'll take the questions later. Yes. You can ask doctors. Yeah? Hello. What? I have a question, please. Uh, What's they that they you want? want to see whether uh, there is a contraction at 1 milliampere. Uh, Pardon me? Once they, uh, they want to see whether the, there is any contraction at 1 milliampere. We could not get contractions 1 milliampere. We started increasing the current. The first minimal contractions we got was only at 3.25 milliamperes. Okay, thank you. Sir, okay. this needle does have it. Does this needle have a stillet and a lock to it? Yes, the original yes. epidural stillet needle does have a stillet, no. but this is a modified needle. This is basically a nerve locator needle which is used to do this procedure. Okay, so th this needle didn't have a. This needle didn't have a stillet. Right. So, um, okay. Dr. Johannan, uh, Dr.